Boom. I feel much more prepared than I was last time when I was coming into it with a whole lot of hesitation and uncertainty. This time I'm coming into it with a totally different mind frame. Had a good Hi, Gemini. All right, welcome to this place if you're new here, and welcome back if you're returning. Okay, so February, or whenever you find this, um, you're last on the roster, so to me, that's always a good time for quiet, um, regardless of how, how much things are growing or how much things are being created. Just taking a little bit of... Um, um, <clears throat> I guess it's giving that spiritual space a little bit more attention. It may give you uh, it may simplify something um, maybe to help just taking taking quiet from things, taking space from things this month you know it's kind of like c cleaning i just saw someone clean a chalkboard uh do you ever used to do that when you were a kid were you the one that used to have to clap the um yeah, that was kind of a big deal right when the teacher gave the student a teacher duty okay let's see um because i actually see some gen some really genuine growth this month for you um or this is what you're also coming into um so g words a b c d e f g that's a seven okay let's see these two cards that came out oh my <laughs> oh my um let's see what what's this talking about Okay, I don't know what it is collectively. Um, must be something astrologically, too. Yeah, the King of Cups. Um, but there's some, there's some kind of... The way the message keeps coming through is, like, something about celibacy or about, like, curbing... Curbing desires... You know, I thought I always thought I thought it was interesting once I learned that because um, that word said a lot, right? Desire, um, to, you know, fulfilling your desires or whatever. But as far as I've read, the people people in the Middle East see desire actually as a sin. I don't know if Rumi does. Kind of wish I could reference him, but I think I gave that book away. Um, Oh yeah, let's let's read a book. Hold on a second. <clears throat> let's let's see what this keys the scripture is pretty this key, keys the scripture numerics is pretty interesting. Um Let's see what sevens are all about. Hold on. Seven, completeness, spiritual, and perfection. It's page 80. Let's see. Now, of course, uh, well, to reference, I guess this is Christian-based because I'm in the West. So, or however that's defined. You know, if I was in the Middle East, then it would probably, we'd be talking um, different perspectives. I mean, I, I don't sit with one particularly because I feel like God is everywhere. But, um... Let's just read this, because I feel like this could be helpful, <clears throat> right? We can learn from anything. I actually love that, like, learning different kinds of, um, like, people's perspectives on um, what they consider God to them, you know? It's, or what, what people consider, like, magic. It's, it's really neat. So... <clears throat> Let's read this. It says, when we begin, when we began, it's a past tense, 
When we began to analyze and combine numbers, there developed other interesting symbols. It says he, I'm just going to read straight from the book and not try to tweak it to satisfy everybody else because that's exhausting mentally for me. It says he took the perfect world number four and added to it the perfect divine number three and we received seven, the most sacred number to the Hebrews. I'm assuming it's probably sacred to others, but let's roll with it. It says, it was earth crowned with heaven, and the four square earth plus the divine completeness of God. <clears throat> so we have seven expressing completeness through the union of earth with heaven. This number is used more than all other numbers in, in the word of God, save the number one. It says, in the book of Revelations, the number seven is used throughout. There are seven churches, seven spirits, seven stars, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials, seven personages, seven dooms, and seven new things. Seven symbolizes spiritual perfection. All of life revolves around this number. Seven is used over 700 times in the Bible. It is used 54 times in the book of Revelations. So then we have a nine, that's when it shifts. It says, Seven stands for this, in this, the seventh day of creation, uh, the seventh day of the creation week. It speaks of the millennial rest day, interesting, and denotes the completeness or perfection. It says in Leviticus 23, 15, 16, so many numbers, <laughs> the number seven and the Sabbath, which was the seventh day, is connected with the word, word complete. The word complete follows after the words seven Sabbath, meaning the seventh day. The day following the seventh Sabbath, there was something new that took place. It says the word finished is also connected with the number seven. In Revelation 10, seven, we read, in the days, oh my God, my hands, when I just look down, my hands look like, like a child's hands. I just saw a child's hands. It says, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when we shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. It says, it is done, quote unquote, is another expression found in connection with the number seven. It is done. Interesting. And the seventh angel, this is quote, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. Revelation sixteen seventeen. Maybe these are days of the month, too, that are important. What do we have thus far? Well, I guess seven, nine, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty-three. <clears throat> Do you want to keep reading this? Okay. It says, the word created is used seven times in connection with God's creative work. God created all things in the beginning and then took six days of restoring his creation and rested on the seventh day. He appointed seven days for the week. And most, if not all, advanced nations recognize time in this way. Seven days to the week. Few ever stop to think about why there are seven days to the week. 
there are seven notes in the musical scale. All other pitches are only variations of these. <clears throat> when the musician uses the eighth note, he goes back to do or do, re mi fa so la ti do, um, and starts over. Man named the notes, but God fixed the sounds even as God fixed the days of the week, and man named them. Noah took the clean beast into the ark by sevens. Seven days after Noah went to the ark, the flood came. Peter tells us about the long-suffering of God waiting in the days of Noah. Those seven days completed God's time of waiting. Before Aaron and his sons entered their priestly work, they were consecrated seven days. That's in Leviticus 2, which has a lot of rules in it, right? That's the Old Testament. Okay, here's a picture of a life completed or holy, consecrated or dedicated to the Lord for service. On the Day of Atonement, the high priestess, or the high, cool, the high priestess, yeah, the high priest sprinkled the blood upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat seven times. I bet those rooms were interesting. A little dark for me with all the blood, but um, anyway. Although blood is our life force, you know, blood, they say blood rules over our happiness. I guess that's why it's important what we put in there. Um, and our mother makes our blood, right? Wow, this keeps going and going. Uh, I feel like that's enough for now. Now, I want to mention this. This is for somebody. So the devil did show up um, in the reading. But the Knight of Cups... And the King of Cups are looking right at it with no fear in their face. And regardless of um, your spiritual space and how, Hierophant, very interesting, justice. Yes, however you want to define that, Queen of Coins, right? Empress, like, for instance, you, this could be, you could be, it could be anything of, of your natural nature. Oh, like, for instance, I, I find God comes through nature the most. That's how I relate to it. Less human, right, than to me. Um, but the point of the story is that perhaps what we just did there, and I feel like most, whenever, because what is the devil? It is fear. It is, um, well, I guess it's, 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 it's the unhelpful pain, right? The devil, whatever that is. But when you read scripture or when you, whatever that, again, whatever that is to you, it could be reading Rumi poetry, right? That saves us from this because I was thinking about this recently. I guess we're just having a chat. Hi, Gemini. Um, right, if if God or the creator is is ubiquitous, is everywhere all at once, right? Again, in the trees, in the wind, in the in the, your books, in this machine that we we're connecting with right now. That's awesome, <laughs> because whenever we need invisible love, when we when we need when we need something and we can't seem to find it in the physical material world, it is always available to us in the in the invisible world. But now the devil, for instance, although I am very much like a, well, if there's one side, there's got to be another. But I think it's important to not put the devil or whatever this, this darkness is absolutely as an equal to the creator. Because technically, if we take this story, let's take it in a Christian sense for a second. Like if God created the devil, if God created Lucifer, then... Um, that's a creation, therefore it is not perfect, therefore it, it can be uncreated, 
right? It it can be. Um, it is not everywhere all at once. It is isn't. It is not omnipresent. It is not, um, and it is not love, right? Because that's that's basically what the devil is. is however you want to call that, it's like it's the opposite of love, right? It's just not love. And love, seemingly, is the holy place. Hierophant, very interesting. So if you ever get stuck, because because you're twelfth on the roster, to me you also sit in the twelfth house or the sick, however you want to look at it. You, it's it's a place of where um, it's a place of redemption, right? And um, and of cleansing, right? Releasing ourselves from from any kind of confine, right? Whether, because th that exists in the material world. Um, seeing Henry David Thoreau, interesting. But, you know, the confines of our own mind, right? The prison of our own mind and, and where we've put ourselves or defined ourselves. That, that's a completely different story. Fascinating reading. Okay, so. Well, I guess the question is, is you know, for instance... Um, Maybe prayer for some folks is like, oh, okay, I see. I heard, how do you connect to the power of eternity? <laughs> what is this reading, Trippy? How do you connect to the power of eternity? And maybe that's what the silence, again, because, for instance, to me, music can be prayer. But some music, even though that exists and it doesn't create a silence, it actually creates a silence in your mind, right? Um, it reminds me of, like, when all the Sufi men, like, go in that... I don't know what it's called, right, where they do the circle spiral, and it's like going in and out, and it's almost like tribal, it, it's a tribal energy where it's creating this rhythm, it's almost like uh, the sound of, the sound of creation, right? Um, fascinating. Uh, hold on a second. So I heard, do it however you want, um, but know to, to find, well, maybe someone just needs to recognize that they can't do something wrong. Maybe that's what stops a person sometimes from finding a deeper, a deeper place, um, or a brighter place is they feel like well I don't know if that's right or I don't know if that's good I heard is that what I'm supposed to do world Let's get rid of that devil. Yep. Uh, just a second. Trippy reading. I mean, I suppose... Okay, hold on. When you were three, four years old, where did you live? What... Maybe that maybe that's a part of it. I also see um I guess it's seven. We could take these sevens like when you were seven. I see the number twenty one.
I guess seven in a way also connects to other people. How we how we connect to other people. And I guess your connection in relation to yourself and other people, there's there is some growth around there that um Or there's some, okay, there is growth around there, but there's also some seeds. Some, it's, it's like, it's like the prayer space or whatever, again, whatever your expression is, whatever your understanding is of, of this space that brings you something that brings you peace and makes you happy to be in this life, right? Um, that which brings you happiness in this life. Um... There is such creativity here. I would say that that which is in your life that is genuine and suiting to your own soul's growth, that is, I heard, exponential, king of coins. Nine of coins. Nine of earth. And I suppose that which is not genuine, five of coins, yeah, that which is not suiting to the soul or to a person physically or whatever, it's, it's like someone's acknowledging what's appropriate here. And I guess it's giving a little space and time to sit with what you're creating, people, places, and things, and, and maybe just like how you feel about that moon, perhaps. And I feel like that's really... Good, because you're going to, someone's going to be able to acknowledge something. And, you know, maybe, I, I keep seeing where there's a little thorn. Um, maybe that'll help remove the barb of something. Um, I'm seeing where people, someone is taking, takes a moment and acknowledges like what's, what's close to them, what, what's within their reach. And due to that acknowledgement, like something lights up. Um, so, so someone recognizes like uh, queen of, queen of earth, beautiful. Um, cancer had this energy. Um, But they're actually working a little bit more through the material world. But you, after we had that big conversation about this invisible, right, this potential or whatever, again, it's a very creative space, I guess. Once that's communicated, then you ended up with all this earth, right? So there must be something the Spirit's trying to tell you. And haven't we been talking about this for a while where it's like, Gemini, you're meant to create something physically. You're meant to have something in the physical world or share something. Two of Cups and the Star, maybe King of Cups, maybe some of you has to do with love. And again, other people, Ace of Wands, yeah, very, it could very well be that. What What's possible with other people? Um... But I guess a lot of that Queen of Cups really starts with you. And um, huh. I guess to close this out, we could t let's try to technically look at um some earthly situations um i actually do see uh money growing for you or again things in the physical world but money's a part of life um i also see having a partner or the people in your life 
that that which you're connecting with is growing also it helps you grow too um If you have children, there could be something that's a little bit um, having to do with family, I guess. Let's see, Tower. May that I, I don't know if th maybe that's a part of what needs some prayer to, like, your energy. Because um, remember, Gemini is Mercury, and Mercury, if Mercury, we're using the Roman words, right? Uh, because it's it's Hermes. Um, if we go all the way to Egyptian, but either way, Mercury is 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 the operator of of the world. <laughs> really, you can talk to way up high. You can talk to way down low. These different places, and and I guess you even just sitting with something. Um, helps connect these lines. And so I guess if you're wondering if you're doing a good job, you don't need to question that. Something else to remember is that your effort, I guess, in a sense, remember that your effort also very much matters. Um what you do in the physical world, what you create with, right? And of course, I guess, the spirit wants your attention or wants to tell you something. I don't like the word download because we are not a machine, right? We are a soft, loving creation. We're not hard and cold, right? I also feel like there are, there, there's a creative thing that someone's doing. I guess sometimes someone has to make their own light this month or or seek or seek it out. Magician, there you are. Uh Okay. We'll leave that like that. I feel like that's enough for now. Interesting reading. I didn't expect that. I actually never really expect anything when I jump into it. It's just kind of get in the water and see where we go, right? Jump in the air and see where we go. And I guess that's where we went. Cool, 28, 28, we'll take it. Um, I love you, Gemini. Thank you for being a part of this place. Um... Yes. Hold on. What do you feel like? How how do I how do I how do I? No, I guess what we said what we had to say. talk to you next time. Thanks for being here and